Russian Ka-32 multi-purpose helicopter was destroyed at Ostafievo International Airfield, Moscow, reported Ukrainian media outlet NV, citing sources in the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Reportedly, it belonged to Russian Defense Ministry. The source noted that the helicopter was used to provide air support to the Russian Occupation Army, in particular, to meet logistical needs and evacuation operations. Ukrainian Defense Intelligence published the video of the helicopter being destroyed. This is interesting, because it means that Ukraine have operatives deep on Russian territory. In Kherson Oblast, a Ukrainian forward air controller guides a pair of Su-25 Frogfoots into a rocket attack run, hitting the center of Novopokrovka with a number of S-8 rockets. Good news, Belgium has decided to transfer F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine already in 2024. Previously, deliveries were planned for 2025. The planes are delivered as soon as possible while the exact amount is still undisclosed. But the situation on the Eastern Front is still deteriorating. The Russian flag is hoisted in the eastern part of Soloviov, Avdivka direction. It is likely that Russian forces control the small settlement, and the Ukrainian army has retreated further west towards both Sokol and Novopokrovsky. There have now been three Russian strikes utilizing cluster munition from Tornado S, X-35 and Iskander M, with all being observed by an Orlin 1030 in the Dnyeprovetsk region, more than 100 kilometers from the front line. At this rate, I'm worried that HIMARS and other MLRs will be as easy detected. In the Kherson region, Ukrainians are still holding Krinky, and this is visual confirmation that the Ukrainian army has advanced to the western edge of Krinky. This means that the bridgehead is alive and that the Ukrainian forces managed to expand it, some Russian channels fear that this is just the beginning. Let's wait and see. Russians are disappearing. With the West supporting Ukraine, so-called Russia has no chance. Even more, the war will not be very long. Putin has cash for four more months. Konstantin is a Russian with an independent channel on YouTube. He is an economist by profession. Three reasons for Russians disappearing from the labor force. First is the war. It's sucking in uh, Russians, Russian men who are, uh, you know, able to fight and who volunteer. Number two, um, immigration. Smart and bright people, they simply leave. They don't want to participate in the med circus. And number three, whoever is left, the military industrial complex enterprises, are just um, attracting and uh, ejecting from the labor market, so to speak. Russia is not going to be um, continue at this pace for a long time. What Russia is doing right now is not sustainable. The reason Russia is still functioning, the Russian state is still paying for um, war products, you know, for the death produced, is that it had big reserves before. And the reserves were acquired because of, you know, the vast richness of Russian land, oil, gas, metals, and so forth. But it's out of the reserves, it's out of cash. Russian government has money enough to pay for the military industrial complex products for four months. What are they going to do after? See, the West, the USA, has upped its military spendings right now. It's um, updating the entire infrastructure, military infrastructure. It's, uh, you know, stockpiling new weapons. Europe is doing the same. But they have not fundamentally changed their economies. If you are in the United States or in Europe right now, you, you know, you are going, your country is doing the same that it was doing before. It just corrected 
uh, your budget, your country's budget for a little bit. It upped military budget, but not by a huge margin, you know. Russia has um, gone through fundamental change, and that change is not sustainable. And that's not good for Russia. You know, it cannot compete with the West. Let me tell you what the future will bring to Russia. Three things I'm seeing very clear right now. Thing number one, and it's been happening for the last year or so, people will become poorer and poorer. Every month will bring new hardships for Russian people. Um, it's because um, there are many areas of life where USSR seems to be back already. What is USSR? It's a set of laws and regulations. And some of them are back, and some of them are working in Russia. So people will become poorer and poorer. So, number two, there will be more catastrophes. If you think that the worst is over, you know, last winter, <laughs> it was pretty darn bad. 40 major Russian cities declared emergencies because um, their utilities simply were breaking down and there was no one to fix. Putin thought that he would just roll over Ukraine. He thought that Ukraine wasn't a real country. He thought that Ukrainians wouldn't fight for their democracy. And he thought that the world would just stand by. Putin was wrong at every point, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin during a meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. Now, Putin thought that he would just roll over Ukraine. He thought that Ukraine wasn't a real country. He thought that Ukrainians wouldn't fight for their democracy. And he thought that the world would just stand by. Putin was wrong on every point. He didn't count on Ukraine's resolve, and he didn't count on us, all of us. Over the past two years, some 50 countries from across the globe have gathered for ministerial level meetings to coordinate our urgent military assistance. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.